Hey people, John here from Fast Films, and today we're going to go through a 2011 horror movie called Vile. The movie kicks off showing a man tied down to a surgical table as a female surgeon works on him. He opens his eyes faintly to scan through the room, almost as if he was oblivious of how he got there. Before he could make sense of his environment, the surgeon begins the procedure, and the red liquid begins to drip into the test tube. Without anesthetics or painkillers, the man squints in pain over the gag placed on his mouth. After the procedure, the surgeon then packages some tablets into a briefcase. In the next scene, Kia wakes up near Tony, her lover, on their campsite in the woods. She meets with her friend, Taylor, and discovers she was with child for her boyfriend, Nick. After urging her to feel good about things, Taylor finally musters up the courage to get to her boyfriend, Nick, who was still asleep. She walks to him and wakes him. Then, they get into some romantic talk, which goes on for some minutes. Eventually, Tony spoils the fun of the moment as he interrupts Nick and Taylor, breaking it to them that they had to leave their campsite. A little time passes, and the day elapses. It's time to go. The four campers pack up their stuff to leave for the city. By nightfall, the four of them stop in front of a gas station where Taylor takes a bathroom break. As she gets to the bathroom, Diane, a random traveler, arrives at the gas station and asks Nick for a ride back to her car, which ran out of gas a while back. Nick says, yeah, he'd help her out, and she walks back to get something. Nick continues filling their car and jerry can as his girlfriend comes out of the bathroom refreshed. She finds out about Diane and fusses a bit about Nick offering a stranger a ride without knowing them. Soon, she succumbs to her boyfriend's coercion as Diane gets the ride. Seconds later, they journey through the dark road to Diane's abandoned car. Things get more awkward as they approach Diane's car. Diane quickly rushes out to get something, and when she comes back, she sprays some gas into the car, knocking out the four of them in the process. In the next scene, a group of people decide on what to do with their four captives. Apparently, they were also victims of some unknown abductors. One of them breaks Tara's fingernail, which annoys Tony. He forcefully breaks out of his chain and beats up the perpetrators. While things settle, everyone finds out they were also victims of a gas attack by Diane. Moments later, they leave the room to watch a video in the living room. There, they find out that they were kept there to pass through pain as a female doctor explains to them they needed a chemical the brain only produces when it's passing through dangerous situations. After the video, a pain percentage bar appears on the screen, and they all introduce themselves. Then they deliberate on whether or not the video is fake. After concluding the video is real, they all argue over how to break out of the house. Just then, Julian, one of the older captives in the house, freaks out in front of the CCTV. Sam, another one of the older captives, instigates a vote on whether to do what the female doctor says or not. Eventually, the vote ends in them doing what she says. Julian, who's had enough, tries to remove the device installed at the back of his head. After successfully removing the device, Julian gets eliminated. Then, Greg, another member of the crew, decides he's going to be violated first, so his brain produces the chemical and he'd get out of there fast. After an hour of being beaten up, they all decide to try another approach. This time, they tie Greg to a table and inflict even worse pain on him. Tara, a psychopath, takes the reins and breaks Greg's right leg in two. This goes on for a long time until someone stops her and talks to Greg. After the session, every victim in the house sits down to decide their next move. Taylor suggests waiting out on their perpetrators and allowing them to show themselves as time runs out. However, Nick suggests they think things through and be smart about things. This doesn't sit well with some group members as they grumble again. Sam then suggests they draw a front first, which they do. In a couple of scenes, the captives can be seen trashing the place, injuring themselves, and using their blood as ink to make inscriptions on broken pieces of glassware. After inscribing numbers on the glassware, they place the broken stuff in a bucket, after which everyone picks a random plate, telling them their number. After picking up the broken stuff, Sam finds out he's the first to be toyed with. He mans up and removes his shirt so the effect of the hot iron would be felt more immensely. They start up the pain operation and continue until his turn ends. Up next, it's Nick's turn. He chickens out a bit and checks out Sam, who was quietly laying on the couch. He sits down and thanks Sam for manning up to decide for the team. However, as they talk, Tara calls Nick to start his pain procedure. Meanwhile, Taylor freaks out silently in the kitchen. Another member of the group joins her and they discuss Taylor's pregnancy for Nick. Minutes later, the lady leaves and Taylor suddenly remembers the morphine Tara put in her boots back on their campsite. She quickly pulls it out, puts it in her mouth, and runs to Nick's location. She kisses him, passing the pill into his mouth and listens to the group come up with a plan to break out of the building. Tony gets tired when he hears the others planning to leave Greg, the first person that was injured by the painful procedure. He leaves the room to the cowards to begin the pain procedure on Nick. They pull out Nick's fingers as Taylor sits in the corner crying over hearing her boyfriend's screams. 
After the procedure, the pain procedure doesn't go up. Taylor keeps mute as the others think about what the issue could be. Eventually, they all decide to just move on to the next victim, a woman named Lisa. Upon noticing she was next in line, Lisa runs and hides in a storage room. It doesn't take long before Sam and Tara drag Lisa out of her hole and onto the table. As Nick recovers from the pain, Taylor breaks the good news to him. She was one month pregnant with his child. Nick doesn't react to this as he's in a state of shock. Before he mutters any words to his girlfriend, Tara comes to tell the duo that Lisa was done with her session. Later on, Taylor tells all of them that she's pregnant. Tara argues that being pregnant doesn't let her off the hook. Just then, she chastises Taylor for using morphine pills on her boyfriend. Taylor apologizes and brings the pills out. Greg, who's silently suffering from the severe pain he's felt, demands to be given the pills so he could manage his pain. Tara and Sam go against this, but Nick and Tony give Greg the pills nonetheless. Tara acts inhumanely and chastises Nick for giving Greg the pills. Tony gets enough of her nonsense and knocks her out. And Tony and Kia decide to help Taylor out. However, their plan fails as Tara sabotages it and almost takes out Tony. Thankfully, Kia saves the love of her life by knocking out Tara. When she comes to, Tara finds herself tied to the pain procedure table with everyone ready to inflict the best pain they could ever think of on her. Tara, who already knows what's coming to her, throws a fit but is held down by the others. However, before she's restrained completely, she harms Kia on her neck. Realizing the love of his life was about to pass on, Tony becomes depressed and enraged all at the same time. He opens his eyes wide as he demands to take control over inflicting pain on Tara. When it's her time to taste the pain she's so used to inflicting on others, Tony makes sure she enjoys it. After raising the percentage of the drug from a mere 46% to 84%, Tony decides he's gotten his fill of revenge. He leaves Tara to discuss the next line of action with the others. Taylor decides that they all have to inflict pain on themselves at the same time. This time, they'd be able to fill up the pain chemical production to about 100% before time runs out. Everyone accepts the plan, and Tony picks up his wrench to inflict pain on Nick's shoulder. When it's Taylor's time to receive the pain, Nick takes it for her. And moments later, Tony gets his share of pain, and finally, the pain chemical gauge reaches 100% on the screen. Upon reaching the magic number, the woman on the video from earlier reappears again. She congratulates them for finally reaching 100% on the pain chemical gauge and offers them a way to remove the devices on their heads and head back into the real world. Everyone gets their head device removed with Nick and Tony going to get Kia's body before heading out. Upon getting back inside the room, Tony carries his lifeless girlfriend's body, removes the device, and also removes his afterward. Upon heading out of the device removal room, Tony screams out Nick's name as squishing sounds are heard outside. Taylor tells her boyfriend to get outside as she heads back to get Greg, who couldn't walk. When Nick gets outside, he finds out Sam was the meds company's inside man. Meanwhile, Greg finally breaks it to Taylor. He says he thought they were rumors. He further explains that he sold the meds produced from the pain chemicals to people, and he didn't know the meds were made from real person's pain. Later on, he passes on, and the door closes again, as if the whole process were about to start over again. Only this time, Taylor was inside the room. In the next scene, Nick finally catches up to Sam and chastises him for betraying them. Meanwhile, Taylor, in a desperate attempt to raise the pain chemical bar to 100% again on the screen, inflicts pain on herself multiple times. Luckily, Taylor's successful as the bar reaches 100% again. However, Sam gains access to the device in their heads and activates the autonomic pain infliction process. This causes pain to the heads of Nick, Tony, and Taylor. Sam then comes near Nick, who is holding a weapon, and down talks him. Nick gets close to him and takes him out quickly. Then he rushes to Tony and forces some pills into his mouth. Sadly, it's too late as Tony meets his end. Nick then rushes to his girlfriend who's still in the room they were kept in, with all attempts at opening the room proving futile. Taylor passes on and Nick breaks himself out. In the next scene, Nick gets coffee and some waffles at a diner when he spots Diane outside. By nightfall, he follows her to the same location her car was parked at the night they helped her and knock her out as she tries to destroy the evidence. The movie ends as he carries her, places her in the trunk, and drives away blasting music off her speakers. Thanks for watching, guys.